Time is the one thing we're not going to be able to really replace. So the answer is to just get faster. Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake of RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome. So today I've got some video editing tips for you. You guys know that I am an Adobe Premiere Pro editor. I've put out over a thousand videos on YouTube alone and I actually have some quick tips for you guys on faster video editing. One of the things that lets me put out so much content in different platforms is efficiency. It is a focus and prioritization on speed more than anything else. A lot of people I feel get obsessed with quality. And don't get me wrong, quality is important, but there is a minimum threshold of acceptable quality. And after you've met that threshold, I believe in prioritizing speed because time is the asset you don't get back. Quality is subjective, but speed, time, that's real. There's time that you could be spending either getting more work done, more content, spending more time with your family or your friends or on personal care. So I'm going to help you with five tips for faster video editing that's gonna give you all the time in the world. Tip number one, organize everything. Organizing your footage is gonna save you so much time and frustration in the long run. Just taking that extra bit of time to do this first is going to actually set you up in the future, especially if you need to reuse any of this footage. So labeling things is going to be the most important thing that you can do. Put them in the proper folders, make sure you're organizing those things by date and also by context. Sometimes I even go so far as to organize things by what camera they were shot on. And this becomes important when it comes time to make presets and do color grading. And so I don't have to think about it as much. So definitely make sure you're organizing your footage and your assets, especially when you're bringing them into Premiere Pro or into Final Cut or whatever your editor is, I prefer to bring these things in and to organize them in folders according to what I think I'm going to need. So I would just make sure you're doing that. A quick version of doing that, make sure you have a folder that's specifically for your audio files, your main camera files, and then any of your B-roll footage, and then your other assets. If you're organizing in this way, it will just make things less confusing. It will make it uh, easier and you won't have to hunt for them. Another quick tip in there, if you're using Premiere Pro, you can use the search feature in the asset bin to go ahead and find files. A lot of times I'll do this by typing in the type of file extension. So if I'm looking for audio, I can grab an MP3. If I'm looking for uh, a quick adjustment layer, I know I can just type that in. So there's just so many things you can do with this. Just get organized. Tip number two, make custom presets for things that you use over and over again. Making custom presets, if you do uh, footage under specific controlled conditions, like let's say the lighting that I use typically in my YouTube setup, you can make a color grading preset in Adobe Premiere and in most of your other editing programs. And so you don't have to sit there and do the color grading manually over and over if it is similar conditions and if it's the same camera. Usually I have a basic preset that I've made for each of my cameras when I'm shooting indoors in my home office. And so I apply those presets and I know which camera it is and it's just one click and the basic color correction and color grading is done for this setup. I also make presets for other things that I use on a regular basis. I have a color keying preset that I use when I need to knock the background out of the recordings that I do for mobile apps using Reflector. So that's something that I just have as a preset, which means that anytime I do a mobile app tutorial video, it's just one click to knock that thing out for the background and put it up here on the screen. This is what I actually did in the Anchor video when I was um, showing you guys how you can use that to make a podcast. So again, make your own custom presets. They're going to make everything a lot easier. Just go ahead and set these things up. You can do it for color grading and you can do it for a lot of your other settings settings as well. Tip number three, use audio waveforms to be able to do quick rough cut edits to your footage. I use audio waveforms to be able to see where I need to cut footage. If I make a mistake and I mess up a word, what I do is I uh, snap three times. I do that so that when I'm looking at the recording, I'm looking at the waveform, I can see exactly where I made a mistake and I know to go there, prioritize that and edit. If I do this correctly, and I'm making sure that when I'm recording, that I'm you know giving myself those audio cues, a lot of times I don't have to sit there and agonize and look through footage over and over and over again to find things to cut to make sure that everything's correct. Tip number four. Tip number four is probably one of the more important things I could tell you to do. Prioritize passive task. 
What I mean by this is that there are things that you don't have to babysit when you're working. Primary example is when your footage is loading, when you're dumping your files, you don't have to sit there and babysit that. You can go ahead and put that in place and you can walk away and do something else, work on anything else when this is taking place. Render times, a lot of people whine about render times, Premiere Pro versus Final Cut. Render times are almost irrelevant to a certain degree because you could be doing something else. You could be editing another video. You could be working on the thumbnail. You could be doing any number of things while that rendering is happening. You can go take a shower. You can go make a sandwich. You can do something else. So prioritize and understand these passive tasks and use them to your advantage to go get other work done. Don't sit there and babysit things that are going to happen in the background for five or 10 minutes. It is a waste of time. You can use that time more efficiently somewhere else. Don't worry about it. And tip number five, do things in batches, whether it's the actual recording of videos, whether it's the, um, you know, importing of files, whether it's the loading things up, whether it's the rendering, do things in bulk whenever possible, do batch processes. And that is going to make you wonderfully more efficient, it is gonna save you so much time, and now you know how I can put out so much content. Usually what I do is I set aside an hour and I film back-to-back -back content, and then I maybe that day or another day, I sit down for two hours and I edit back-to-back -back content and set things up to process and to render in the background while I go do something else with that time. And ultimately what that means is that in the equivalent of an eight hour workday spread out across two or three days, I can produce about two weeks of content in that time. And that might sound staggering to some of you, but it's not even just about doing like talking head stuff. A lot of times I am cutting in B-roll. A lot of times it is a tutorial video. A lot of times there might be some other things going on. And a lot of that just has to do with ways that I've found to do these things very efficient. I can do something that looks pretty robust. And while a general video like this one might only take me 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes tops to edit and to turn around, I could do a lot more to it efficiently and still not spend more than an hour editing a video. So you can do high end, well polished videos, but spend a minimal of time editing if you're wonderfully efficient. The other thing that helps is probably a lot of good hardware. I'm not gonna lie. My computer hardware probably saves me the majority of the time because I like to edit on a desktop. I have multiple SSDs in there. I've got a robust graphics card. So I do take advantage of those things. I also use dual monitors because it helps me with my setup. If I wasn't though, and I was back to editing on my laptop like I did at the beginning of this channel, I still prioritized being as efficient as possible. And so I really think that a lot of you could save time on your editing if you use these five tips. If you'd like me to do a 10 tips video following up on this on even more things you could do to produce your content faster, let me know in the comment section and I'll try and get that video out for you. If you still have questions about video editing or video editing hardware or software, leave those in the comment section too and I'll try and see if I can help you out. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. There's over a thousand videos here. As always, you guys, thanks so very much for watching and don't forget, create something awesome today. Hopefully with less time now that you've watched this video. Take care.